at Side of Theatre, most people know you for your portrayal of Lorna Morello in the Netflix series Orange is the New Black. How did that gig come about? Um, it came about, it came about like a strange blessing actually. Uh, so I, I had been in Sydney for, for most of my time uh, doing, doing TV and film and mostly theatre and then I, I thought, oh goodness, I haven't lived anywhere else in the world and I'd always intended to and I thought, okay, I'll just throw myself in the deep end and I had been to New York because we had taken Diary of a Madman, which was a show we did here um, and we went to New York with it. It was pretty intense. I, it's interesting that I decided to go back there because the experience I had was that I had a shaved head. I went there in the middle of winter to do this crazy play in front of thousands of people. I mean, it was pretty intense. I think I got pneumonia um, from the cold because I just wasn't really ready for it. And But something in me was like, yeah, I definitely think I should move here. And so I, I kind of packed up everything here and moved over there without without much of a plan, really. Um, and I, di I, did some, I did some waitressing in some Australian-themed cafes. And, uh, and I, uh, Dan and I decided to get married. And the day after we got married, I auditioned for Orange is the New Black. And I had, I had the, I, I didn't have much in the way of makeup at that time. And I had one lipstick which was this bright red lipstick that I wanted to have for when we got married. And so I was like, oh great, I've got this lipstick, I'll wear it to the audition, fantastic. Um, and that turned out to be Lorna's lipstick. Um, and it was quite fortuitous. So you kind of, you know, you created that part of the character in a sense? Well, the, the, all it said was that about, the, the only character description I had for Lorna was that she was wearing makeup. So I was like, well, I've got this one lipstick, this will have to do. Um, but yeah, she's, she's lovely. I've, I really, from the moment I kind of read that role, I really loved her. Um, and the, you know, her very unique sounding voice, which obviously is quite different to my own accent, um, is, ha was there from the beginning, was there from the audition, and was kind of, I mean, you th I think back and think, geez, that was a really bold, offer that could be very embarrassing and wrong um, but that seems to be the way I go it's like I I make ridiculous choices <laughs> and sometimes they're right and sometimes they're wrong a lot of people aren't aware that you're Australian because the accent is so convincing how how did you hone that accent um oh, I can't say that I've honed it I feel like there's a, there's a, there's it, it is its own unique brand of sound. It's actually kind of soup of different sounds <laughs> coming together. What elements? Um, well, there's some Boston vowels and some some strong Brooklyn New York vowels in there, um, and they come together in their own special law. I will say I kind of have you know I have very definite rules, so I mark out my script each time I get it and. And I have rules about which vowels go where and which consonants change to what. And um, so, it, but, but it is very specific to Lorna. And the sense was that she was kind of this East Coast cocktail. <laughs> How has that character and the success of Oranges and New Black changed things for you? Or what doors has it opened? Um, it's been an extraordinary experience and a real gift for me, both professionally and personally as well. Um, I was very lucky because I, I was in New York for a short time and, and, and quickly embraced into this magical world. And, I, you know, I was only signed on to do one episode and then I did another and another and another and, and every time I was invited back it was so thrilling and so exciting. Um, and it's not just because, oh, I've got a job, it, it, it's because it's, it's a really special job to have. Um, and I love it so much and to get the opportunity to do it and do it more is, is really all I could ask for. Um, the show in itself is, it, I couldn't have imagined a more p perfect show to be part of. Mm -hmm. What it does is, is pretty revolutionary. You know, we have so many women visible in a show and not one type of woman, but a lot of different types of women. In terms of visibility, being part of a show that celebrates all different ages, all different sizes, all different sexual orientations. I mean, we, I, I like to think that, you know, 
with Laverne Cox, we have one of the first really visible trans actors. And then from that, we've then seen shows like Transparent and, and visibility for that population has increased so much in the last, what, four years, which yes. is just incredible. Mm -hmm. And to see that sort of watershed moment, to see that change, it, it's truly wonderful. And to be, to be a witness to it is incredible to kind of know those people and be proud to say that, that they're my friends, you know, that Laverne has, has stood up and, and spoken so beautifully for her community. It's a wonderful thing. And, and not only that, to have, to have like not one queer character, not one black character, not one Latina character, but just be like, you know what? There's this whole range of people we've actually been uh, not, n not focused on, not acknowledging, not telling the stories of. And Maybe those stories are a little more interesting than the <laughs> ones we've been telling. Um, of course, on the most recent series of Orange is the New Black, there was another Australian cast member in... Who? Who was it? <laughs> um, did you get to work much with her? I think we had one scene together. Yeah. Um, but because of our Australianness, we did get to hang out a bit. Yeah. Well, we wanted to hang out a bit with each other. And, uh, yeah, I'm thrilled for... Obviously, things have just exploded for her. Um, it's not so unusual because, I guess... In Australia, people knew Ruby and knew her more in her kind of VJ capacity. Um, and it's, I mean, it's extraordinary to see how she's just been completely embraced and, and loved. And I feel thrilled for her. She's a wonderful person. She's got her heart in the right place. And, yeah, yeah it's great. Good, good things for good people, I always say. I'm sure, I'm assuming you can't talk about it, but does Lorna have any exciting things in store for us for the next series? I can't say anything other than... I can't say anything. Um, I, I think, you know, what, it's not often that a series... It's not often a series happens. That's really rare. When a series exists and people fall in love with it and then they do a second season and then a third season and now we're, we're about to release our fourth season. So it's kind of in that place of... It's, it, it, it's, it's kind of like family now. Um, and certainly for me in my life, those, those women particularly, and obviously there's a few guys in it as well, are like family. So when I think of the show and I, I kind of think of some of the storylines that are coming up, um, I think people are, are going to feel like there's some, there's some big changes for the family. Right. Yeah, yeah. There's some big, beautiful storylines. And, you know, Genji is not afraid to, to write funny and she's not afraid to write right for the heart. Mm. And she's certainly done that in this season. Yeah, it's, I think it will be very powerful for, for people.